So, game number three in our best of three chair league season four. Final four. This is for all the marbles. It is going to be 3D versus 8 equals door. Winner of this is playing Saturday for a chance at that t shirt. T shirt that only chair league champions can win. That game going to be cast by Haloran in the afternoon, Saturday, the 22nd. 3D did pick the map. 8 equals doors getting first pick. I am not surprised at all by them hovering the Zarya ban. Um, I would ban it. I dislike the shielders. And that is going to be the first ban out of 8 equals door. Um, now, the real question is, does 3D go for another shell? Okay. They don't want Abathur playing. They're going to go ahead and ban that Abathur outright. Jumping right over to 8 equals door and seeing what they want to pick up here. Would not be surprised if we saw a global or... It's too early for Lost Vikings. But it wouldn't surprise me to see a global or setting up for a global-esque match. Or a, a, rather a Vikings match. So a strong four-man leaving you with TLV as your last pick. But... 3D knows that 8 equals door plays Vikings, so also wouldn't surprise me if 3D banned Vikings on the second go round. Um, it'd be interesting to see what these two teams pick going into Cursed Hollow. Global reigns supreme on this map, so again, wouldn't be surprised if Global um, is picked up first. And there it is 8 equals door grabbing the Dahaka. All right, and 3D answering back with the Falstad pick. They, of course, want to have a global to contest the Hakka's global. And Falstad's actually, you know, a great pick on this map. Falstad's a good pick on any map that's larger than two lanes and you need to move from top to bottom quickly. This is definitely one of those maps. And 3D staying on the Lucio hype train. They have had Lucio... All three games as their healer picked in the first or second slot all three games. So, not surprised here. Um, they definitely seem to like Lucio as a healer, and he worked great for them last game. Malfurion, though, is my personal favorite healer currently. Um, I have not... I look forward to the Uther rework in 2.0, but I like Malfurion. The roots, I think, just make it uh, that much easier to get a kill sometimes. And it definitely doesn't hurt to have Innervate going out on your carries. Or in some cases on your Warriors. Malfurion players out there, don't forget Warriors like mana too. And Innervate can help us. And Muradin is the second pick. So, um, I actually, this is interesting. I like what 8 equals door has done here. They've gotten all of their heroes that are ban worthy out of the way. They have a tank. They have a solo laner. They have their healer saying, yeah, you guys can ban what you want. But really, there's so many ways we can go with this comp as it stands right now. that You really can't stop us from doing a good job here. Not sure this is TLV worthy. But they could make it work. A rush. Ugh, excuse me. I'm not sure they would have enough DPS to do it, though. If they do end up going Vikings in that last slot. So. And really you want second pick for that. Because that gives you the one solo pick slot. It does not give your opponent time to ban it. But a Zeratul ban on the side of 3D. Could they perhaps be thinking about going Lost Vikings? Zeratul of course infamous for hunting down Vikings. In every way, shape, or form. Ooh. I like this. A new Barak ban if they lock that in. I actually really like that. That could lead to a nicely mean pickup.
And they stick to that Anubarak pick. Hmm. So if I'm 3D right now, I know I need my tank. They took Murden and Dahaka off the board. Johanna is a decent pick here. Um, as is Varian. Plus a damage dealer. You know they can't do anything. So Li Ming, Li Ming is not here. So Varian Li Ming is not bad to pick here. I'm not sure they will, but I kind of like that. Li Ming can poke for days on a tribute spawn. But the Arthas Tychus is the choice we get. Okay. Um, Arthas does a lot of damage around him. Uh, and and can really, really slow down heroes. Um, especially with the roots. As well as the aura, his E. Um, Tychus, of course, like I said earlier, great in the double warrior. Great just overall damage. It's just a bummer he got his range nerfed. But Tychus, also a good pick. I don't know that either team's going to go TLV, but they obviously they could still do it, right? A, a team is going to make what they want to work, work here. Um, so it is absolutely possible that they make this work. I'm just not sure that they're going to try and force that square peg into the round hole. Always possible, though. Always possible. And honestly, 3D's got a decent four-man comp. They could TLV without a problem. All right, there's the Li Ming. And there's the Grey Ming. All right, so that's that's the damage we're going to be rolling with for 8 equals door. Um, I like that. Li Ming and Grey Ming can put out some serious numbers in a short period of time. Their burst is incredible. Um, and against the Lucio, that could actually work. Until 10 when Lucio has, let's break it down. Then it becomes... Even with the amount of burst Li Ming and Grey Ming can do, it becomes hard to get through that shield because that shield is just so large um, that you just have to back off and say, all right, let the shield expire and then we'll push in again. But last pick now over to 3D. Will we see a Vikings or will we see something a little more normal like a Vala, uh, a Kael'thas? Kael'thas can work as well. And we see an Ariel. So double support coming out for 3D. Hmm. I mean, it will be easier to keep everybody alive with a double support, but Ariel, she'll get a decent amount of hope from Tychus and Falstad, but not like Vala and Gul'dan levels of hope. Um, you know, ignoring both teams, I think 8 equals door actually won this draft. Um, I'm not sure Mystic would agree, but I'm going to go with 8 equals door winning this draft. We'll have to see who wins the game because this is game number three in our best of three semifinals of chair league pro division that means winner here plays the winner from the game hero physio is casting right now in the finals on haloran's channel saturday afternoon that is this saturday the 22nd but for the red team team 3d we do have ruckle on the oriole j money on the arthas fancy pants on the falstad frumgore on the lucio and i love it when that happens so i'm just gonna cheat a little bit J Money on the Arthas. And for the blue team, 8 equals door. We do have Tan Long on the Muradin. Malfurion being played by Nailter. Rusty on Greymane. Hoshibaba on Dahaka. And Picante on the Li Ming. The battle begins in 10 seconds. That timing when you try to hype a match a little bit extra and realize, oh, I ran out of time trying to get ready to hype the match. 
couldn't quite get all the names out, but that's cool. We got them all out at the end of the day. And now we are in the final game where we are going to see both teams look to start with a five on five in the middle. And there's that Li Ming poke. The distance is crazy. Lots of damage coming out onto Fancy Pants playing that uh, Falstad, but nothing quite enough to really kill anybody. Spread damage coming out onto the Arthas and the Lucio. Again, nobody quite able to die. Falstad rotating down to where the Hawk is. Bottom lane, and we still have a uh, pseudo three on four going on mid lane. The Hockey, of course, saying, All right, it's cool. I am now going top lane. See ya. Uh, and we got a three man rotation from eight equals door coming into the bottom lane. This could spell the end for the Hockey. With Murden, Malfurion, and Li Ming down there. Uh, I'm sorry, Falstead. Um, but the Hockey, of course, being pressured by two healers and a Tychus. Grayman, Grayman coming up to help out his poor buddy Dahaka. Falstad, of course, still alone against a Leeming Malfurion. Malfurion still hiding in the in the bushes. Quick, someone re report Nailter AFK. Um, and then mid lane, we do have Murden and Arthas swinging their wet noodles at each other. I, I don't know how many of you are warrior players, but when you get warrior on warrior in the middle lane, it gets kind of boring uh, as a warrior player. So, yeah. Um, but bottom lane being pushed in that first, that top cannon tower out of ammo and down, uh, health wise as well. So some value coming in for eight equals door in that bottom lane. Dahakin now traversing to the bottom lane, leaming, throwing orbs and magic missiles at the Arthas looking to cause some damage while Muradin has now transitioned to the top lane. So both teams sitting at four right now, XP very, very even. Um, structurally they're they're very close to the same but it's interesting we see eight equals door kind of moving their their rotations around quite frequently and not leaving anybody statically in one lane for any period of time cycling through who's bottom lane who's top lane who's mid lane and you know really just making life difficult for 3d to react correctly to it but we are going to see first tribute spawn and that is going to be in the bottom lane both teams on five so no advantage xp wise Ooh, Arthas trying to sneak around here a little bit and aggressively position on 8 equals door side of the map for this uh, tribute spawn. Li Ming looking to interrupt. False set does so, but at her peril, she goes down really fast there between the roots from Arthas and False set putting the damage in, but False set not out of danger. Greyman saying, that's cool. You kill ours, we kill yours, and Arthas is now down to the gray main. The Haka grabbing the tribute. Tychus, of course, had to clear the giant camp that gray main had picked up top lane earlier. And we do see a rotation of Ariel, Lucio, and Falstad to the bottom lane slash Merc camp in the bottom lane siege giants for... 3d top lane murdering just kind of moving around looking to do something here not quite able to gray main finishing off the bruisers mid lane for eight equals door and lee ming malfurion putting a decent amount of damage into the arthas so both teams back into the poking phase tribute. we do have level seven picked up by both teams just in time for the next tribute to spawn Li Ming getting rooted is going to be able to escape, though. And continuing to throw missiles and orbs into Arthas. As well as Ariel. Uh, Malfurion already starting to channel. Not going to be able to quite complete. But a lot of damage coming out. Arthas getting actually quite low. Still chasing, but nobody dead yet. Lots of damage coming out from both sides. The Hawk is still in the bottom lane soaking. So this is a five on four that eight equals door is successfully delaying. 
And the longer they delay this, the better it is for them. That means they might get 10 earlier. But Ariel able to finish the channel on the tribute. And that's going to be one tribute on each side. The Hockey in danger trying to get back inside of his wall. Barely able to do so, but is able to. Surviving only about 50% of his health lost. We do have 3D rotating back up towards the mid lane. Looking to put some pressure possibly on the Li Ming. But well spotted by Malfurion. No damage coming out there. And next tribute is spawning in the mid lane. Just on the 3D side of the map. Giving them a slight advantage in picking up this tribute. But not enough to really make a difference in my opinion. Just enough that it exists. Murden trying to zone as best he can for Malfurion. Grabbing that curse. Tribute not able to finish it. Ton of damage coming out on the Greymain who dove in deep looking for a kill. He goes down. And that should be enough to have 8 equals door back out and let the tribute go over to 3D. But not quite as Li Ming interrupts one more time. The Haka back soaking mid lane and bottom lane as best he can. While the rest of 8 equals door soaks the mid lane. Both teams pretty close to 10. Looking to pick up that magical number 10. Nobody has completed their quest yet. Falstaff flying down bottom to try and deal with that Dahaka. Murden versus Arthas in the top lane. And mid lane just being cleared of minions by Li Ming. And Malfurion against now Ariel. As the rest, Lucio Tychus push in and start the Bruiser camp for 3D. Greyman, of course, on the Siege Giants camp. 8 equals door finishing that and moving into another position bottom lane we do have most of that front wall down on the side of 3d mid lane decent chunk of the wall down here as well on the side of 3d and tribute spawning this will be curse tribute if 3D can get it. Otherwise, it is going to go over to 8 equals door. Lots of heroics being popped here. Looking to get that kill. Arthas is the first to die. And that should be curse number 2 going over to 8 equals door. As the rest of the team splits to soak the various lanes. We are going to see Murden go all the way to the bottom lane to try and deal with this Falstad, who is actually on the fort for 8 equals door. Falstad getting a barrel roll out and look to stay safe. Curse Bullet coming out. Ariel getting absolutely melted as well as Lucio as soon as Greymane and Li Ming set their sights on them. Oh, wow. So, Curse Bullet, Teleport in, Laser Beam comes out. That's going to be two dead support characters on the side of 3D. Great kills. Great kills. And that's going to be top lane fort going over to 8 equals door, giving them 13 versus 11 and allowing them to what should be a free Curse Tribute here. We do have Ariel moving in first. Murden had to pop Avatar to survive. Getting really low. Is barely going to survive. Out comes the laser beam. Tons of damage going in. And Arthas goes down first. But that means Li Ming resets. And I would not be surprised to see someone else die. Greymane, however, going down for 8 equals door. Looks like they might actually have to give this up. That means Curse going over to 3D first. This is their chance to not only catch up on XP, but take a lead. And let's see if they can do so. Slightly difficult to do with Arthas being dead, but they do have a chance. And it looks like they're going to start this mid, mid wall and try and get at least the walls down. That's what I would focus on. Ton of damage coming out from Li Ming onto that Falstad, though. 
is able to be healed up by both Ariel and Lucio. And looks like they are going to escape. So, three playing this pretty safely. A uh, ton of minions here in this top lane, though. And 3D here with four members. Looks like this is where they're going to choose to fight. Murden getting oh so low. Body blocked by Lucio after being knocked back. Is going to die. Li Ming throwing out her beam. Trying to secure a kill and help her teammate escape. Not quite able to do so. But the B steps coming out anyway. And that's going to be top fort down for 8 equals door. So right now top forts on both sides have been taken. Uh, looks like this bottom fort may go down, but no, Doc is able to save it. And 3D starting their boss. So, uh, red boss taken. Of course, 8 equals door also starting their boss. The hockey gray main doing most of that work there. Going to be able to finish this boss off pretty quick. But we do have 3D rotating down. Trying to invade. Not going to be able to do so. But may actually be in a bad spot. Damage coming out on Arthas. But out comes Let's Break It Down. And that was my fear. Lucio able to save all of his team there. And Boss pushing into that top lane. Looking at keep wall. Greyman going back to defend. Possibly with the rest of uh, 3D, but it looks like Leeming and Mouth may actually just push this mid lane in while Greyman defends boss alone. Bottom lane, though, three members of 3D are on this boss. Do save their bottom lane fort. Greyman losing a good chunk of the keep wall, though. And that's going to be 15, now 16 versus 14. Sixteen versus fifteen, two forts down on the side of eight equals door. Only the one fort toppling down for three D currently. Ooh, what have we here? This could be an invade, but face checking a bush with Arthas in it. Not always a safe thing to do. Tons of damage coming out on Arthas, but he is going to survive with the rest of his team there to back him up. 3D versus 8 equals door. We could see a 4 on 4 fight here. But it looks like we might not. And 8 equals door going to be able to successfully invade this camp. And take it away from 3D. Tribute spawning. Curse point coming up right now for 8 equals door. Are they going to be able to secure this curse? And are they going to be able to make more happen with it than 3D did? 16 versus 15. I'm going to say yes. Li Ming already finishing that channel. Curse has been taken. And now 3D needs to be ready to defend. Because 8 equals door is looking to get a kill. And looking to take keep wall if possible. Nice three-man root by Arthas coming out. Out comes the Odin. Looking to do tons of damage to 8 equals door if possible. Dahaka in that bottom lane. Escorting minions. Getting as much value as he can. Really, 8 equals door looking to win the XP race here. 220 at this point. Not necessarily looking to take as many forts as they can but looking to just get such an xp lead that they can snowball this into finishing the game i do expect this to be a second keep wall the hockey is at the bottom keep looking at it <clears throat> all right that's top keep wall bottom keep wall and the hawk is starting or sorry top keep wall mid keep wall the hawk is starting bottom keep wall Enough. that will be the end of the curse the Haka already moving to meet up with his team. Um, we could potentially have a gank here, but no. Looks like all of 8 equals door going to go ahead and back out. So structurally, 8 equals door is actually in a much better position now um, than earlier. 
Gray main is mid lane grabbing that bruiser camp on the side of eight equals door for himself. Falstead checking the bush with a hammering. Sees Lee Ming in it. Decides to back away. Out comes the beam and Lee Ming just zoning. And again, Picante dropping those B steps saying, what's up? I'm a Lee Ming. Check me out. So Falstead soaking top lane, trying to get XP for his team. Dahak is soaking bottom team, bottom lane, trying to get XP for his team. Uh, we are going to see 20 versus 18 would be my guess. Um, camp's being picked up by Greymane in the back and the rest of the team in the front. And uh, here we go. 8 equals door pushing into the keep wall, looking to possibly get it down. That's going to be 20. 20 versus 17 is not a position you want to be in. 20 versus 18 isn't much better though, just so we're all on the same page. But keep walls down in I believe that's all three lanes. Boss avail both bosses are available. And it looks like we're going to see Murden mid lane, making sure the lane stays clear, and the rest of 8 equals door pushing into the bottom lane. Looking to take this boss and let him go to town on the keep. Tribute spawning right next to 8 equals door and where that boss was. Murden looking to jump in and interrupt this boss. Or at least delay it enough that the rest of his team can get there. Dahaka coming out of the burrow. Oh, this could be a steal, but Falstead gusted. Falstead may have gusted early. Oh, 8 equals door not quite able to get on there. And out comes all the skills. Two, three members Dying on the side of 3D. They may have gotten the boss, but they did lose their Falstad. Their Arthas and their Ariel there, leaving only Tychus in his Odin plus Lucio left alive. This should be at least two keeps going down. Nope. Looks like all of 8 equals store going to go on this bottom keep. Kill it as quickly as they can and then try to push that boss onto the core. I would not be surprised if this was game. 20 seconds left on everybody coming back to life. Boss on the core. Core dropping oh so rapidly. 8 equals door looking to finish here. 50%, 40, 30, 20. Oh, that and Tyke is dying. That is game number three in our best of three going over to 8 equals door.